Elizabeth Stroud is living out every fiction writer's dream. Her first novel, Amy and Isabel, is a winning story about a young girl's sexual awakening and her relationship with her mother. Ten years in the making, Stroud's persistence has finally paid off. It has been optioned for television, is now on the New York Times expanded list, and has been back to press twice. I am pleased to have her here for a conversation about a first novel that gets this kind of attention. How long have you wanted to write this novel? I wanted to write that novel probably probably for about 10 years, but it took me um, a long time to figure. I, I've certainly wanted to write a novel all my life, right. since my earliest memory. Right. But it took me quite some time to find out that it would be this novel, to find the story that needed to be told and that would eventually get told. What's the story? The story is essentially about um, secrets and private passions of everyday people, but it does center around um, a single mother and her teenage daughter, and the teenage daughter has become involved sexually with her high school teacher, and when the mother discovers this, of course, she is very upset and a crisis ensues, and um, they have to figure out how they're going to deal with each other after that, and the mother's own secrets come out as a result of this, and there is other people in this town, and they have their secrets, and... and um, Knowing a little bit about you, you wanted to write about ordinary people. Yeah, yeah. Why? What well, I'm just ordinary. That's, that's what I know. I, I just have always lived just, you know, I'm very, very every day, and that's what, um, what I know. You write what you know. This com the story itself comes from where? From the story itself was actually inspired by one particular scene that um, is completely imagined, was completely imagined, and it's the scene, I'm not going to be specific about it because I don't want to give anything away, but it was a scene where the mother is punishing her daughter for this right. act, and she punishes her in a particularly humiliating way. And I saw that very clearly for quite some time before I was able to understand that that would be, that would be where the story came from. Because if, I, if, if I had that scene, then I had to find out who the daughter was and why was she hanging around this teacher, what was that all about, and then who was the mother and why would she respond in that particular kind of way and what was that all about. And so then I And how did you find all that story. out in your imagination? By spending time with these characters, you know, going to the page every day and, um, and spending time with Amy and with Isabel and with the women that, um, that Isabel worked with and, and, um, and just finding out by writing about them. Your editor uh, was an editor at the New Yorker magazine who mm -hmm. moved over to Random House, That's correct? right. Uh, he, you had written for the New Yorker. I had not at that time written for the New Yorker. I had um, written stories for many, many years, and I'd sent them to right. Dan Menneker at the New Yorker, and he um, had rejected them all. But he'd <laughs> been um, very nice about it. And he wrote you. I, I, <laughs> and he was a, very a famous encouraging. Famous rejection letter. Right. right. He was very encouraging about it. And then when he became. A random house editor. Right. And he's a novelist. At, he's a writer himself. Right. At that point, I had lost contact with him because I'd been working on the novel for so right. long and not doing short stories. And but I had heard that he had gone over to Random House, so um, I asked him, you know, if he'd read it. After how much rejection? Well, it had been um, rejected by a number of agents. I couldn't even find an agent who was um, willing to take it on. Some agents had been real interested, and then at the end, they backed down. Have you said, heard from them since this became no. so successful? <laughs> No. no, not a word of I was wrong and good luck. None no. of that. No. What's, what was the hardest thing about doing this? Not getting a publisher, but writing it right. itself. The hardest thing was worrying that I wouldn't really be able to find out who Isabel especially was. All the characters. The mother. Yeah, the mother was very difficult for me to get to know. Writing the book was a process of You're getting to know. You're a mother. Well, yes, but Isabel, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, yes, I am a mother, but I was writing about Isabel. Right, and a Isa different mother. Isabel's a made-up mother. Now, certainly, I would draw on my own experience yeah. as a mother and a daughter. I, yeah, I your, your am book both. is dedicated. I like, you know, it was dedicated I, to your daughter. Yes, Zarina. 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 Yeah, for Zarina. How old is your daughter? Well, she's now 15. Now, would you allow her to read this? <laughs> oh, yes, she's quite free to read it, but she's chosen not to. Really. Why? Yeah, um, she just said she'll do it when she gets around to it. Now, is there something here more than I want to know? I mean, is it because no, I mean, is it because she doesn't want to see what you've been writing, or because what? I don't. I don't really know. Is it know. just the nature of a relationship very, with a mother saying? Well, 
I don't know. I think she's just very involved with her own life right now, and and um, she's got other things. She's to got read. other things to do. Yeah. Really, quite frankly, she's you know she's very very much has other things to do. But no, she told me, she I told mean, me the other day that her peers. friend right 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 <laughs> that her friend got hold of the book and um, <laughs> said you got to read your mom's yeah, book. No, they took it's it to hot. the coffee shop. This book is hot. Go home and read your mother's yeah, book. She read it aloud to this group of girls with my daughter at the coffee shop. The sex scene, and they all laughed and. And my daughter was telling me this, and I and I was really sort of embarrassed. And I said, "Well, you know, I hope that didn't embarrass you." And she yeah. said, "Oh no, it was funny." And then, of course, I was doubly embarrassed because I thought, well, "What was so funny about it?" it funny. <laughs> but yeah, seeing this, yeah, what does it mean to you? Uh, it's a, it's a little unreal still, actually, because. Um, I, I, I saw that in um, paper form for years and years and years, stacked up on my dining room table. And um, so it's still, it's still a little strange to realize that it got tucked into uh, some covers. And the success is beyond your expectation. Oh, it's, it's just, it's wonderful. It's, it's wonderful because writing is so solitary. And then to actually have people responding to me and saying, oh, I loved it when, you know, Isabel did this or whatever. And, and you know, and people telling me, I had to lock myself in the broom closet at work, somebody told me, so I could finish this book. And I'm like, oh, thank you. And Good. Oprah has optioned this for one of her Oprah Presents things? For, yes, yes, Harpo Films. Yes. Much success to you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Amy and Isabel, a first novel, Elizabeth Stroud. We thank you for joining us. This is one of a series of programs about books, the world of authors and writers and critics and reviewers and, and the way that books are for us all an insight into our culture. They are about every subject imaginable. What is the human conversation? It is about books. It is about sports and paintings and it is about stories of ordinary people, the extraordinary lives that ordinary people live in which they experience all of the emotions that Shakespeare wrote about as well as Elizabeth Trout. So we thank you for joining us for this inaugural journey of ours on a book and a show dedicated to books. We'll see you next time.